How to quit your job and record music full time. So I've been a freelance audio engineer in Los Angeles, Las Vegas, and now Nashville, Tennessee for about four years now. And I've just generally been hustling as an audio engineer for almost a decade now. So in this video, I'm going to share with you seven steps and lessons that I have learned coming up in the studio world and ultimately how I went freelance. So first of all, thank you for being here with me and wanting to learn more about recording and how to improve your skills, ultimately growing into a full-time career. My name is Andrew Masters. I live here in Nashville, Tennessee and work as a freelance audio engineer. I actually first came up in Los Angeles at a studio called East West. And during my time there, I worked with clients such as Weezer, Justin Timberlake, John Legend, Sum 41, Tegan and Sarah, James Blake, and many, many more. Now. I am 28 years old. I'm married to a beautiful, talented woman, Ariana, and together we have a beautiful little baby boy. His name is Jack. I actually engineer here in East Nashville at a studio called Beast Side Tracks. It's a great facility and it has some super fun gear. So before we get into it, do me a favor, leave me a comment below and just let me know what brought you here. Are you looking to record music as a hobby? Are you looking to start a career in recording? Have you already done that? If so, how's that going? Also do me a favor and hit that like button. It really helps me out with YouTube. Thank you, I appreciate it. How to quit your job and record music full time. So the very first thing you're gonna wanna do is start. Start recording. Record, record as much as you can. Just record with whatever you have. If you have a phone, if you have a microphone, an interface, a laptop, whatever you have, use that. The point is to do it and to learn from what you're doing. You don't need a big studio and a ton of equipment to get started. Think about what you ultimately want to be doing and get specific. If it's tracking or if it's mixing or mastering or working and recording maybe for picture and, and film, decide what that is and take the small steps that are achievable to get there. Something I should also say is when you're getting started, you should have no focus on making money. Worry about getting your money from somewhere else. You're not gonna get anywhere if you are concerned about cashing in and making a bunch of money when you don't have any experience or any value to bring. It's that simple. Number two, improve your skills. So after one and you've done some recording, hopefully have done a lot of recording, you're gonna start to notice very specific things like that it probably doesn't sound very good. And you're gonna wonder, why doesn't it sound good? Well, it sounds like I was in a bathroom. Well, were you in a bathroom? Or are you in a big space? You know, all these things. Ask yourself the question when you notice things that you don't like, why does it sound like that? It's usually the most simple, most obvious answer is the correct answer. So two, improve your skills. This is not a get rich quick career. You need to understand that. You need to be obsessed with what you're doing. You need to have the drive to constantly improve what you're doing, learn new things, keep an open mind, constantly try new techniques. When something doesn't work, don't do it again. It's really not that complicated. There are a lot of things that go into this and you need to commit to improving your skills and constantly learning new techniques, whether that's uh, recording techniques, mixing gear, software, whatever it is, you need to be committed to trying new things and developing your style and before you even get your style, just learning functionally how to do it efficiently and then systemize it. The best way to do this, again, is to be obsessed. You need to obsess over learning mic placement. What kind of mics are used for different purposes? Different ways to record a guitar or different ways to record drums. Like, that's exciting to me. And if you're still watching this video, then it's probably pretty exciting to you. So just utilize the fact that you're obsessed with it. Utilize your interest and your drive to learn more. Record yourself and other people for free. Work for free. Do whatever you need to do to get better. Okay, number three, synergize your schedule. Now, I picked this up from Think Media. Synergizing your schedule means aligning your jobs, your hobbies, anything you do for free work, anything you do in your free time, align all those things with what your end goal is. If your end goal is to create a living from your passion, recording music as a career, then you need to align all these things. And when you start to align them and you start to surround yourself with people who have similar interests and who support you and want to help you and creative people, like it's all going to work together and it's going to bring you to that end goal a lot faster. 
most people don't want to make the sacrifice that they need to in order to have the career that they want, whether that be in music recording or anything really. If you are willing to make the sacrifice and change what you can control in order to move closer to your end goal, recording music full time as a freelance audio engineer, you will advance so rapidly. It will be mind boggling. Another way you can do this is invest the money from your side hustle right back into reaching your end goal. Now in recording, that can mean a lot of different things. Investing in equipment or software or you know, sp investing your time doing free work for other people. Instead of spending your money on useless things, invest that money in gear or software that's gonna help you get closer to your end goal. And that's gonna help you ultimately get better at what you're doing. And it's gonna, it's gonna, just gonna be awesome. Just don't be stupid with your money, okay? Use that money wisely, save it, invest it, get what you absolutely need and nothing more. Here's some tips. Batch your free work or recording projects into days that you aren't doing your side hustle. You inevitably are going to be working some sort of side hustle to pay your bills, but in the meantime, you need to schedule your days off, excuse me, so that you can do as much recording or mixing, whatever it is, as possible, and then work on that in your downtime throughout the week. Like at the end of the day, when you're done with your side hustle, take the recording that you did on your off days and then just experiment with it. Do a save as and like try some different stuff. Get weird with it. You need to be realistic when doing this and you need to understand that this is not an overnight success and that's a good thing. You're gonna wanna be very confident in your work and your experience and the best way to do that is to spend the time doing it right and learning from your mistakes. You're gonna make a ton of mistakes but those are what's really gonna help you get better because you're gonna know immediately don't do that. That was bad. That that sounds bad. And if you don't notice it, the people who you're working with are going to say, no, that, that's not good. That will teach you immediately. Number four, don't take on too much at once. There are a lot of different moving factors in recording music. Don't get, don't get caught up trying to be the best tracking engineer, the best editor, the best mixer, the best master, masterer, or the best acoustician tuning your room. Don't overwhelm yourself by trying to master whoops, by trying to master all of these at once. Maybe just focus your energy on one thing at a time and really dominating that. Like maybe you could start with focusing 100% on smashing that like button. And then you can move on to tracking and then everything that follows that. But just focus on one thing and get specific with what you need to improve and then do it. The way that you're gonna see the most improvement is by being incredibly specific. Focus on it until you become successful at it. And once you are crushing it at that one skill, then you've done it. You can now confidently move on to improving another new skill. Hey, if you're liking what I'm talking about here, do me a favor, send it to a friend that's also interested in doing this or somebody who might benefit from this information. It would really help me out. Number five, the sweet spot. Narrow the work that you're doing down to what you excel at and then serve a very specific customer. So for instance, in the engineering world, there are engineers that are just tracking engineers. The guys that you work with in the studio, they're setting up the mics, they're picking out the mics, they know how to get a specific sound in a specific room and what works well together. And then there are mixing engineers. And mixing engineers basically live in holes. It's very dark and they just listen to the same song that they're mixing about 9,000 times. Those are two very different beasts. Okay, so trying to be both of those beasts at the same time, it's not gonna be fun. You want to be super good at what you are doing and you want to be known as that guy. I want the, the tracking guy or I want that the mix guy, that mix guy, the guy. For instance, people come to me because I'm the drum guy. I'm a drummer. I love, I got into engineering because I love getting great drum sounds. And I'm, when people want to get cool drum sounds, they come to me because they know I'm the guy. It's that simple. By the way, I'm the drum guy if you want some cool drum sounds. Number six. While you're doing this, you want to be smart with your time, also with your business. It's not all technical. Actually, most of this, once you get the technical stuff out of the way, most of this is actually personal and more business. So what do I mean by that? Well, as far as business goes, in today's world, social media is king. That's just, that is what it is. Make a profile on Facebook, on Instagram, on Twitter, on YouTube, especially YouTube, and whatever else, and just take five minutes a day, probably 10 minutes to put some quality in it. But what's 10 minutes? Take 10 minutes 
seven days a week, okay? And post content on what you're working on. Post content on what you're working on or who you're working with. And if you're not working with anyone, post content about, like, if you're setting up a mic, post a picture about it. Tell a story about it. Talk about what you've learned recently. Do literally make a story. The stories are the best most undervalued way of keeping people's attention. And if you can just post one story every single day, people are going to know what you're doing and they're going to see the progress. So many people are just sitting on Instagram and scrolling. They're sitting on YouTube while they're at work, while they're driving every day. And if you're posting regularly, your followers are going to notice and they're going to have their attention every single day for about five to 15 seconds, sometimes a lot longer. You want to build your brand as the recording guy or the mixing guy. I think number five and six are kind of kind of a mush together mush so doing that over time is going to give you a lot of exposure and a lot of branding people are going to notice and recommend you to other people who they know who might want to record music or a family member who's written some songs or whatever it is people who follow you who you maybe don't know or don't talk to are going to notice and they're going to say i follow this guy on instagram you should check him out he records guitar all the time he could probably do exactly what you need if you don't do that you need to understand that your competition is doing that and they are winning let me tell you why it's free it doesn't cost you anything it doesn't cost you anything to post just do it it's free it's free okay all right by the way oh by the way if you if you happen to notice here i've got my website right here my instagram make sure you check them out great references to use check out my website and my instagram i don't know if my pointing's working here i'll put the links in the description another thing on the social media tell stories about the clients that you're working with talk about them because your clients are going to appreciate the fact that they're getting free publicity coverage that they're getting free output from somebody else who has their own brand people are going to appreciate that and it's interesting it's really cool to see people collaborate and hear stories we all love stories about people that were interested in it's really not complicated stuff you don't need a big business plan you just need to just start just do it just make stuff make things and do it consistently every single day number seven when to go full time so if you are following these steps every single day you're going to be very busy time is going to fly by your skills and your abilities are going to improve and compound over time it's going to be so exciting and so fun now as you become more confident your workload is going to get stronger and heavier and the quality speaks for itself and your brand awareness is literally growing day by day the demand for you and your value as an engineer or business will force you to have to quit your side hustle because you're not going to have enough time that's the new hustle is doing what you love and recording music and being awesome at it and once you do that, you're going to have more time to commit to doing what you love. And I don't know about you guys, but I've been a freelance engineer, like I said, for four years. I'm 28 years old. I mean, it's awesome. Not having a boss rules. It's great. I've got a family already. We're about to buy a house. It's, it's awesome. And I record music. Like, it's a, it's a joke. Okay. Don't get me wrong. I'm not rich. I'm not you know, at least by what my standard is, I'm not there. I, I hold a, a high standard, but you know what? I'm doing what I love. So I live a life of wealth. It's great. Now, something to consider is once you make that leap, you need to keep your work ethic as consistent as you did when you had your side hustle. You need to fill out that time with whatever it is. Never lose that obsession. Keep that obsession because it's only going to snowball you into crushing it seven days a week, which I recommend doing. Do seven days a week. Once you're fatigued from making so much money, then maybe take a day off every once in a while, but not like every week. Eventually your clients are going to get bigger and bigger and more well-known and your pay is just going to go up, which is really fun by the way. Part of being realistic about this is knowing that this is not going to be an overnight success. Be realistic about exactly how much time you have available right now once you understand whether that's an hour a day or maybe one day a week, make the sacrifices that you need to make in order to accomplish your goals with the time that you have. Become the best at what you are doing. If you do these things, it's not a matter of if 
you will become successful and be able to quit your job and record full time. It's a matter of when. And the only factor determining whether or not you actually make it is whether or not you hit that like button. I'm just kidding, last time, it's you. You are what determines it. You have the power to do this. It's how much you're willing to commit, how much you're willing to obsess, how badly do you want it? Because honestly, this, this advice can be applied to basically anything. I mean, it's pretty common sense stuff. Thanks again for hanging out with me today. If you like this video, hit the like button, leave a comment down below and tell me where you are in this process and if this information was helpful to you. And if it wasn't, tell me all about it. I'd love to know. All right, I'll see you in the next video.